if you've ever dealt with a problematic algae that you've had trouble identifying, only to later find out it's staghorn algae, and you're noticing your plants aren't really fighting this algae off. In fact, your plants are kind of struggling a little bit. Well, then this episode of In-Depth Solutions might just have the answer for you. Hello everyone, this is Bentley, and in this episode of In-Depth Solutions, episode one, the the very first, we're going to start looking at Nick's tanks. And uh, we'll, we'll of course hide the rest of his name and stuff here, but he had four planted tanks, he was dealing with some issues across pretty universally all of them very similar. Certain plants were struggling, uh, he was dealing with some algae that just would not go away, it was very persistent, despite having CO2 in several of his tanks. So... Let's dive into what we're initially dealing with and walk through it. Now, at first, going back and forth with Nick, and this is kind of a learning experience. So uh, my, my previous video introducing this series kind of tells you what I learned and what we need to, to do this correctly. So we had four tanks. I want to focus in on one because all of them are experiencing similar issues. He kind of told me briefly about them all. And they all have really similar planting and setup, so it was kind of easy to just, okay, let's start with one tank, and we're going to apply what we learn across all those tanks. For those of you who are like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know, I know. <laughs> there is a potential that there's a lot of differences in each of these tanks. And the smallest one being that one tank is designed for Taiwan bees, so it's going to have a different carbonate hardness than a lot of the other tanks. However, the overall problem is similar across a lot of these tanks. So he gave me his lighting schedule, uh, his CO2 when it comes on, about how much when it goes off. He did note that he was turning his aerator off at a certain time. Okay, so we're going to keep that in mind. And uh, went over kind of his dosing regime of fertilizer. So let me pull that email up and, and let's go through a lot of the, the stats here. First off, we have a bunch of pictures. Let's look at those. We'll see what we're starting with. And you can see in the back, there's this blackish gray algae. But if you look really carefully and look at how it bends and stuff, this is staghorn algae. And lots of people deal with it. Nick mentioned that he, at first he said, hey, I've got four tanks. Uh, what, what info do you need? And I, I sent that back and he told me about his, his air and stuff. So what we're looking at is he tested all of his water uh, and got very, very similar results across all of his tanks, the only difference being a little bit in KH for his Taiwan B tank. Uh, thing that he forgot to add, which is that CO2, which is 1 to 3 BPS, depending on the tank, uh, pretty close to 30 ppm CO2, according to drop checkers, tries to keep CO2 low due to the livestock. This is, again, the Taiwan Bs. Wouldn't want to lose about 500 bucks for the Taiwan Bs, and I don't blame the man. And then he also has some 50 Amanos and some guppies in this particular tank. He uses RODI with a GH booster, in order to get the water the way he wants it, and then sent all the parameters. So I'll, I'll tell you the parameters here, which is KH 2 degrees, GH 14 degrees, calcium 50, uh, so that's 50 ppm, I'm assuming. Phosphate was 0 0.0 or 0.25 ppm. Uh, nitrate 30 ppm, so a little high on nitrates, but not horrible. You still want to probably bring that down. Uh, pH was 7.3, TDS was 3.4, or I'm sorry, 314. I can read. <laughs> Does a 25% weekly water change and doses thrive once a week. So we're doing three pumps of thrive once a week in this tank that has CO2. Despite the fact that the nitrates are high, uh, you will see in the pictures here, you can see a couple things going on, right? We've got that algae. And then we've got uh, plants that just don't, they don't look very lush despite having CO2. We're not spreading, we're not dense. And we've got a bunch of holes in these sword plants as well. This is something you're going to see as well as uh, what I think is a hygrophila, if I remember correctly. So we talked back and forth. And here's a, the first thing we wanted to do. Very, very long answer came first. <laughs> <laughs> and one thing that anybody who participates in In-Depth Solutions is going to learn, uh, when you give me a lot of information, I reply with a lot of information. <laughs> so just be ready for a wall of text. But I try to lay it out really cleanly. So number one, we wanted to make sure that that air was running 24-7. Don't turn it off. Oxygen helps us fight algae 
even when we have our plants like potentially purling and stuff still push oxygen it doesn't ever hurt you to have more C more o2 in the water and if you're worried about off gassing trust me it's not going to off gas so much that it becomes a problem that's kind of a myth that a lot of people run into Lighting. Uh, rather than cutting the raw hours down, which is the first thing he was like, hey, do I need to cut my hours down? That's why I tried it first. He started cutting more and more time off. We wanted to change to longer exposures because we have a lot of undemanding plants, especially with a sword and kind of the, that carpet, but lower intensity. So we're going to have less overall light power for longer in the day. So like an example, because he has an aqua sky light. We know that light quite well. My suggested setting, setting was this. Sunrise for an hour to start whenever he wants. Seven hours of daylight where the white is at 65%, red is at 35%, green at 30%, blue at 3%, and then the sunset two hours long. No night setting. What are we doing here? So this is to kind of simulate uh, a, a like summer day where you get your light ramps up pretty quick to full power. It goes for a while and then it tails off and it takes a little while uh, you get that long kind of beautiful like red summer, if you will, right? We're looking to kind of simulate this. This is a primary growth goal, right? The goal is to simulate something when the most growth happens for plants out in nature. So this is why we're using this more longer exposure light setup. But the intensities aren't super high. Notice that we're 30% we're and 65%, right? Not terribly high. Uh, and then my response there was basically explaining the same thing goal is to give kind of a longer summary day help these plants three co2 we want to adjust the co2 to start one to two bubbles per second when uh at 30 minutes before sunrise begins uh the goal here is to get the the co2 to start ramping up slowly we don't need a high concentration of co2 but we, we want a little bit in the water especially with our 30 gallon tank uh, and then from there, CO2 goes off 30 minutes after the sunset has begun. So there's an hour and a half of light still slowly ramping down, right? That light's kind of ramping and ramping and ramping it down. CO2 goes off. That last little bit of CO2 is in there while the light's ramping down. It's the last bit that the plants are going to consume before we get into our night mode. And usually in an hour, they can do that. So an hour and a half is playing it safe to be safe for our shrimp. The goal here is to trigger light and CO2 for more robust growth to help fight that algae. Now, we're going to take that schedule, we're going to monitor it for two weeks. But also, since we're looking at staghorn algae, we're going to look at a spot treatment, okay? This is really common. Very recently, it's actually been demonstrated very, very well by the aquarium co-op. Uh, Irene specifically showed this, where you're going to get a small syringe or a pipette and use whatever liquid carbon product you prefer. Just make sure it's one that has glutaraldehyde in it. So this is going to be easy carbon, flourish excel, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? There's tons of liquid carbon products. And what we want to do is in very small doses, no more than the maximum total dose per day going into your tank that is suggested by the manufacturer. That's really critical. Don't overdose this stuff. That's when it gets dangerous. And we're just going to spot spray it directly where the algae is. We're going to get that pipette right in there or the syringe if you have a small syringe. And, and just apply it directly on. And what this is going to do is that glutaraldehyde and liquid carbon are going to start killing that algae, right? They are very, very, especially staghorn is extremely susceptible to liquid carbon products. And when that gets on there, it basically just burns and kills it up. Over time, we also adjusted our fertilization schedule. So what we want to do is we've got CO2 running. We need more fertilizer. We're actually not putting enough in there. We're running it so lean that the plants are kind of starving themselves. And you can see that with those plants that don't look very lush. So what we went to is uh, a, a spreading our fertilizer out over the process of the entire week instead of just dosing it once in a week and, and increasing that amount. So what we changed the schedule to is one pump per day or two pumps every other day. Uh, I generally suggest the one pump per day in this case. So it's 30 gallons, uh, 32 gallons total with CO2. So the total is the akin of dosing basically your your fertilizer twice a week, which uh, Easy Green and Thrive, I think, all suggest this for higher light tanks, more dense tanks, or tanks with light, some CO2. Uh, it's slightly more than that, just to account for the fact that because we have constant things going on, constant CO2, we want that little light, lean uh, nutrients available at all times so that every day there is something for the plants to consume and feed off of and grow in our macro and micronutrients to make sure that these plants 
are taking full advantage of that CO2. Over time, as we look at this and over the course of a week, so we get to uh, a, a while in, I think it was about three weeks or so, uh, Nick contacted me again and sent me these pictures. So you can see here, plants are starting to get new growth. We're starting to look better. More importantly, you look at that algae and the color is a little different. The algae over the time of the spot treatments, just slowly day by day, Nick going in there. And the, the biggest thing here I want to stress, very often when I get these kind of questions, the biggest problem I run into is making sure that someone who gets the advice I give them executes it correctly. Uh, often spot treating algae like this can seem really tedious. I totally understand that. But it's the people who make sure they do this every day and walk through this process that are successful. And huge kudos to Nick, because not only did he follow me to a T, but every time he had a question, he shot it right back to me just to make sure that he was going to get the optimal result to make his tanks go back from being like, man, what am I doing wrong to I got it long term success, making sure those tanks are great. So now we've got this algae dying off. We're starting to get new growth. We still see some old growth. Turns out we got some bristle nose plecos that were in there munching on some leaves. That's why those sword leaves look the way they do. I've had that problem in the past, but. We're looking good. We got new growth. That new growth looks healthy. It looks great. It's got beautiful color. So it's taking advantage of those nutrients. It's taking advantage of that CO2. We're looking great. We're on the right path. Now from here, it's just that cleanup crew. He's got a mono shrimp. He's got Taiwan bees munching on all this dead staghorn algae. When it's live, it's very tough. It's a lot harder for them to actually handle. But as you kill it off, they will slowly but surely graze on it and it weakens. It becomes easier for them to eat. And over time, here's our final result. Algae's gone. Still got a few leaves. Sure. But you know what? All his tanks, not just the one, all his tanks start looking great. Healthy, robust growth. We're recovered. We are on our way not only to looking good, but feeling phenomenal about the progress we've made. Staghorn algae and, and plant issues sometimes don't seem like they're connected at all, but often what we will find is staghorn algae tends to come into environments where uh, something's missing. Sometimes it can be CO2, and a lot of times we think, well, if you have to inject the CO2, you totally deal with algae, right? Not necessarily if we're not giving our plants enough food, right? There's that triangle kind of a power, as I like to say, of light, fertilizer, and carbon. In our case, injected CO2 is usually what that carbon source is. But if we're not making sure that we have enough food with this accelerated amount of carbon that allows for significantly more plant growth and the amount of light is not correct, that's when algae takes over and plants begin to struggle. But it's when we balance those three things right? We get everything in check, in harmony. We're providing enough nutrients consistently for our plants to feed on while they've got that CO2 running. And we're giving them enough light in order to process all these things through photosynthesis. That's when algae begins to struggle. And if we add a spot chemical treatment, especially in the case of staghorn algae with that liquid carbon, getting that glutaraldehyde in there and just killing it off, nipping it in the bud to start. From there on out, it's just a matter of waiting for our natural cleanup crews to take care of the rest of the business. And we're golden. We have a beautiful planted tank. Once again, we're on the road to long-term success. So I hope this taught you guys a lesson. I really hope that walking through this process is what helps you understand how uh, I worked with Nick in order to address the problem, change what we're doing to set the tank up long-term for a success and to look good. And then from there, execution. And that's all on Nick. So huge kudos to Nick. He did everything absolutely spot on perfect. And and sometimes, you know, I've, I've had in the past where uh, I'll give similar advice and people a month down the road, hey man, I'm still dealing with this problem. What were you doing this? Well, you know, I dosed fertilizer this day and then I forgot for three days. And then I, I dosed a bunch because I forgot. And then I, then I didn't dose the next day and then I forgot some more. And and it leads to the, the problem is the habit is what helps encourage the problem. So it's when we make those small adjustments and we make sure that our tank is getting that little extra bit of love and care that then those plants will kick into overdrive, do what they do best, 
beat the algae off, look good, and provide a beautiful, beautiful aquascape to enjoy with your fish or shrimp. So I really hope you guys have enjoyed that. If you have, if you learned something, please let me know in the comments down below. What did you learn from our first episode of In-Depth Solutions? Uh, I, I'm really, really curious to see how you all react. Have you dealt with staghorn algae in the past? Did you use a different approach? Did you use the same approach? Uh, you know, I really want to hear from you guys. I really enjoy this stuff. If you guys enjoyed this video, please, please, please give it a like. Maybe even share it a little bit. That's what helps the magic YouTube algorithm and us, us beggar YouTubers <laughs> do better overall for our channel. It doesn't cost you a thing. And yet it makes big old Papa YouTube real happy. <laughs> uh, if you did not appreciate this, you think like, oh, but you said in-depth solutions. How come you didn't tell me the exact chemical formula of X, Y, and Z? And why didn't you show me the every dose and a picture every... Hit thumbs down twice. Just, just do it. For those of you who are new here, in-depth solutions is a new series to this channel where I'm going to work one-on-one -on -one with fellow Aquarists just like yourself who are having trouble in their tanks. We're going to go through back and forth via email, try to adjust those solutions. Up in the corner right now is the original intro. This will give you all the information you need to know to start and get my help directly. That's right. I'm, I'm a psychopath. I'm going to help you and waste my time for free. <laughs> Just know that it might turn into a video. <laughs> because, you know, YouTube, <laughs> it's a thing. Uh, and then we also have live streams every Tuesday. Other videos that do come out on the, on Saturdays, plant reviews, plant tips, or product reviews, not plant reviews. I guess we could plant review. <laughs> this just shows you this isn't scripted at all, and I'm just a crazy person babbling. Anyway, with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. And stay awesome.